Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every daughter and son that you've gathered here. And Father, as, as your children, our hearts are open to you. And Jesus, you said, if you continue in my word, then you'll be my disciples and you will come to know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so, Lord, we surrender this day to you. I surrender my life to you afresh. Lord, just anoint my mind. Bring, my, bring the thoughts back to me. Bring the instances to me. Just guide my speech, Lord, so that you speak to us this morning and your word finds an abiding place in all of our hearts. And as we embrace this word and live out this word, may, we, may you be glorified. May your church be renewed. And may, this, and may the harvest that is ripe be reaped. For your praise, for your glory, for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now let the hour of our death. Amen. 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 Sisters and brothers, you know, it was in 1972 that I had a very, very deep, radical conversion experience with Jesus through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And um, I would say right from the start, there was one important truth that somehow uh, was conveyed to me and by God's grace, I've been trying to live it out. And that is, my life no longer belongs to me. Jesus has saved me for a very specific purpose and that is to do his will. And now in all these 40 years, as I've been traveling, you know, in the renewal, I've been for 40 years, and I find, you know, we will come, we'll speak with such passion, and speak so strongly, and, and you know, at the, uh, at the end of the meeting, someone will come and say, thank you, brother, you spoke well, thank you very much, thank you very much. And then you meet the person, maybe a week later, a few days later, and you ask them and say, you came for the meeting, um, now I, I spoke something important. Do you remember it? And most often it's forgotten. You know? And that is why the growth in, in God's people is so shallow. The renewal is 50 years. 50 years. And this fire of the Holy Spirit should have swept the whole Catholic Church. The whole Catholic Church. And when you look at the state of the renewal, it's very sad. Prayer groups are dying, people are, you know, have been come for some time, they disappear, we don't see them anymore. And uh, it's, it's very sad. So first thing, even if I go into my teaching, you know, I ask us this morning, us, in, including myself, is my life surrendered to the will of God? Is my life surrendered to the will of God? And if my will is not surrendered to the will of God, then I believe that the word that we hear, somehow we, we, we don't, it doesn't register in our hearts and we don't apply this word time and time and time again. There are certain basic truths, say to certain basic truths, which I cannot afford to forget, which I have to live all my life. And I believe this teaching that I'm giving you this morning, this is my understanding, okay? You can disagree with me, that's fine. But this teaching that I'm giving you this morning is not optional. Every day of your life, you must open yourself to the love of God. Every day. Our whole walk with God will depend on how I listen this morning and how I respond this morning. You know? And so, I pray by God's grace, the Holy Spirit who is here will, will show you and me the, the, the vital importance of living out this truth. Of living out this truth. And so we find, you know, so James will say, St. James will say, in James chapter 1, 21 to 22, St. James will say, he says, he says, therefore, put aside all wickedness, rank growth, you know, put aside all filthiness, all rank growth of wickedness, and receive with humility the implanted word which is able to save your souls, he says. See, God speaks his word to bring salvation to my soul, to bring healing to my soul, to bring freedom to my soul, to bring blessing to my soul. God speaks his word. And then St. James will continue to say, 
and do not be hearers of the word only but doers of the word deceiving yourselves you know and this is this is a great danger brothers and sisters we we come for meetings we come for retreats we hear the word of god time and time and time again and if i don't live out the word i don't rehearse the word i don't meditate on the word and that word doesn't become flesh in my life do you know the danger is i harden my heart hardness sets in slowly hardness sets in and then it you know we we we, we, we can no longer you know receive that word and benefit from the word so listen carefully and and as i told you in my understanding this is after the basic message of salvation you know after the basic message of salvation putting our faith in jesus having our sins forgiven being baptized in the holy spirit for me this is the next most important truth and in this truth all the other teachings will fall into place now this is as i told you this is what i believe and this is what i ever since god opened my eyes to this truth i live this out every day every day every day i live it out okay so how did i come up about this teaching you know faithfully reading my bible over the years and i think about 2 years ago i came to john chapter 15 and when i read verse 9 those words leapt out of the page the rhema came to me see the written word is the logos but the holy spirit has to quicken that word and that becomes the rhema god's living word to our hearts and so when i read john chapter 15 where jesus says as the father has loved me so have i loved you abide in my love so when i read those words i said wow you know this is my little reaction my walk with god is very childlike very simple so like a little child i said wow i said you know jesus loves me with the same passion same intensity as the father loves him and then i said to myself see what the father's love did to the son look at in in his humanity his life was supernatural so also for you and me as a, the call of jesus on your life and my life is supernatural in myself impossible if you really understand what it means to be a christian it's impossible to be a christian impossible But what is impossible with me becomes possible with God, the Holy Spirit. He comes and does the impossible. So when, so when I read that, I said, "Wow!" Now my next question to myself is, I said, "Gee, I want to experience this love." You see, it's one thing to know that I'm loved by God, and a totally different thing to experience that love. We Christians, we 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 Catholic must long for experience. that word of god must come alive in my heart i have to experience it so my next question is oh lord what do i do how do i tap into this love as though i don't know anything you know like a little child so i said okay let me read the next verse and see what the lord has to say to me if i get my answer so i come to the next verse and jesus continues to say if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love So I said, "Wow, okay, okay, okay. Now I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting close to the answer. And 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 what comes to me is that I have to keep the commandments of God. It's in obeying the commandments that I, that I will experience the love of Jesus as He obeyed the Father's commandment, as He surrendered His will to the Father. I too have to surrender that will, and surrendering that will means living in obedience. And then the next question comes to me is." which commandment what commandment so i read the next verse that's verse 11 and jesus continues to say there these words have i spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and your joy may be full i said okay but i have not the answer to my question which commandment so i said fine so let me see i want to get the answer which is this commandment that i have to give so that i can connect to jesus as love so i read the next verse and in in verse 12 jesus says john 15 verse 12 jesus says this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you wow when i read that it was like a sledge hammer that hit me i said okay now i understand that if listen carefully if you want to connect to the love of jesus if i want to connect to the love of jesus the condition is i love one another as as jesus has loved 
love loves us love one another as i have loved you how does jesus love us unconditionally so how does jesus want me to love others unconditionally do we do it that's where the the huge struggle is so i closed my bible and i said yes lord show me i said is there anyone because i'm very very extremely sensitive to relationships the moment a relationship snaps so there's something my 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 peace gets disturbed and until i reconcile myself until humble myself to whatever is necessary and my relationship is restored with the person i am a disturbed person so i said lord show me i said is there anyone uh, that i'm not in right relationship and the lord showed me immediately he says and he showed me an individual who was in my community who left the community but somehow our relationship snapped you know we didn't fight we didn't argue nothing but that relationship snapped and i knew it and he knew it so i said okay this relationship has to be healed has to be restored so immediately i made a decision and i said i forgive i forgive i forgive i forgive i said and then i said i bless him i bless him i bless him i bless him so i said clearly in my heart you know sincerely in my heart i made a decision to forgive completely and i made a decision to love because i knew if i make that decision i can connect to verse 9 what is verse 9 as the father has loved me so have i loved you abide in my love so uh, so i and i did this every day because now i realize my listen to me, my response to god and your response to god is directly proportional to our experience of god's love directly proportional if my experience of god's love is this much my response to god will be this much if my response to god is that much my res- my experience of god's love is that much my response will be that much directly proportional that is why jesus says in john 14 15 jesus says if you love me keep my commandments why do we disobey why do we yield to sin the simple reason is i am not experiencing the love of jesus in a in a, in, a, in a sufficient way jesus is love doesn't satisfy me jesus is love doesn't fulfill me that is why i turn away from jesus and i turn towards sin so really the antidote to sin the most powerful antidote to sin is the love of god so every day now i realize my lord i have to and and, and this passage is in the line of um, john chapter 15 the wine and the branches in john chapter 15 verse 5 jesus says i am the wine you are the branches he that abides in me i in him the same brings forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing so after abide in jesus I have to stay connected to Jesus so that His love can flow through my heart and bear the fruit that God wants me to bear. So I did this, you know, f- every day from then onwards. From then onwards, from about two and a half years ago till today, until the end of my life, I do this every day. Then you know, God worked out, and because of that sincere prayer of mine, releasing forgiveness every day. About a month or two months later. I can't go into the details a fantastic reconciliation took place and today I can see that brother recognize him as my brother I can hug him as my brother and I can see him face to face before if I saw him I would feel uncomfortable and look look the other way but not anymore my relationship is completely healed why because god's love came into my heart see more than anything else that's why jesus says to you and me when you bring your gift to the altar says, and you know your brother has something against you leave your gift he says go and be reconciled he says and agree with your adversary quickly was the out in the way for let the adversary delivers to the judge the judge delivers you to the officer the officer puts into prison verily i say unto you you will not come out of prison until you pay the last penny and you know now the searching scriptures brothers if we only do this if we only do this every time we come for prayer if we only do what jesus tells us to i'll tell you we'll be growing from strength to strength strength to strength jesus knows you're a sinner i'm a sinner i'm living in the, in the midst of a sinful environment and he knows all of us have difficulty with relationships so he says in mark chapter 11 25 26 jesus says when 
whenever you stand praying whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so if you do not forgive neither will your heavenly father forgive you we all i also make this mistake enter into a prayer we try to commune with god we want to be intimate with god we read our scriptures we meditate we contemplate and then there are we have so many things against so many people and that is why we don't grow if you even at, i challenge you i say this to you in love even now you allow the holy spirit to search you and you'll find that you have something now jesus didn't say a big thing he says whenever you stand praying forgive if you have come on say it with me anything come on say it anything once again anything against anyone come on anyone and you'll see quite a few people you'll have in your heart you have something against them or you some against someone and our prayers will not really reach the throne of god our growth gets stunted okay so i began doing this every day making sure you know my heart is cleansed that i as far as i know i'm in a right relationship i'm working in this in my heart and then i began to study um pope benedict that time he was pope benedict in his weekly address to the church he was expounding the spirituality of the doctors of the church you know great man of god such a gift to the church so i was studying his teaching on the doctors of the church and the teaching of saint john of the cross reading it then i came to this last paragraph and i again i just leapt for joy i said wow what god has shown me about 2 3 months ago this servant of god saint john of the cross a doctor of the church is emphasizing and elaborating on it and so what is what is saint john of the cross saying listen carefully this morning if a man has a great love within him it's as if this love gives him wings and he endures life's problems more easily because he has in him in himself that light which is faith to be loved by god and to let oneself be loved by god in christ jesus so what said john of the cross is saying that person who opens himself to the love of the father to the love of jesus that individual gets wings as as it were and is able to rise and transcend all the difficulties all the challenges everything that comes across his path without these wings i'm stuck i cannot rise in other words i will be overcome but i will not be a overcomer saint paul says we are overcomers we overcome oh god and then the scripture will come we overcome through him who loved us paul paul says this. so he says that person opens his heart his soul daily to the love of the father the love of jesus he gets wings as it were and he's able to rise and face all the challenges and difficulties and trials disappointments that comes across his path then he continues to say this act of allowing oneself to be loved is the light that helps us carry our daily burden every day in a sense is a challenge sisters and brothers you know trials come disappointments come situation that have not foreseen suddenly crops up you know failures come and he says this act of allowing oneself to be loved by god is the light that helps us carry our daily burden now very facts in john of the cross says this act that means he's saying do something about this love of god do something like let me give you a simple example every night when we go to sleep we don't like any light in the room so we pull the blinds we want darkness but when you wake up in the morning nearly one of the first things you do is you switch on the light and you and you open the blinds so that the light the sunlight comes in now i can switch off keep the light off and i can keep the blinds on and i can grumble about the darkness grumble over my difficulties my sorrows my disappointment my hurts and, and who knows what and i'll be a miserable person the light the sun has come out so john of the cross is saying come on this act of allowing oneself to be loved by god gives me the strength so i must 
pull the blinds and now the light comes in and and you know what happens when the light comes in your whole what do you say your, your whole response from within changes from darkness you've come into light so this act so i have to do something about it then he says open the windows of the soul so that the light of god can enter do not forget god because it is precisely in opening oneself to his light that strength is found as well as the joy of the redeemed he says he says open the windows of the soul pull the blinds across let the light of god's love flood your soul warm your soul energize your soul motivate your soul inspire your soul he says he says so that this light is not only your strength but the joy of the redeemed to know that i'm loved by god to know that god takes into account every aspect of my life not a worry not a care not a fear nothing because i know god is my father so he says do this he says do not forget god now here is a doctor of the church saying this okay a doctor of the church he and he's from his own experience if i'm not mistaken I, I, I may be wrong. Saint John of the Cross was put by his friars, his own friars, in prison for I think nine months and over. And twice a week they would beat him. And finally he managed to escape from a window. Now Saint John of the Cross must could have said, "These guys are a bunch of devils. Let me flee from them. They're not worth going close anyway." But no, he stayed in the calm light order and allowed this love of God that. he opened a soul to in prison there the light came to him and and his and his and his spirituality will bless the church till the end of time so this man is talking from experience is not talking from his head he would have opened his soul every day to the love of god and in the and in the face of such a tremendous suffering he was able to rise above it and continue to love his friars and remain a, a carmelite and, and 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 be used by god to reform the carmelite order and that's what he is conveying to us he says do not forget god open the windows of your soul he says so that you may find the strength to face life's trials and uh, and the joy of the redeemed now listen carefully to this let us pray to the lord so that he will help us find this sanctity you know sisters and brothers for me i think this is what i say truly the only 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 thing a a christian first and foremost i would say the only thing i must pray for is say jesus fill me with your love abba father i want to know your love i want to know your love fill me with your love fill me with it. because if that love comes in and i connect with my father and i realize god is my father i am his little son jesus is my savior he is my good shepherd then what do i need to pray for hardly anything because the lord is my shepherd nothing i shall want that's my hunger for jesus thirst for jesus long for jesus forget everything and everyone then everything will fall into place everything i've lived this life and I've, i'm out in the world i'm married i've got three children and i don't worry about anything more so after this teaching which, which i rehearse every day soon as any anxiety comes immediately i shun it and i said no 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 get out I refuse to tolerate you God is my father and I find my rest in peace in allowing his love to flood my soul So he says uh so let us so it's a grace so I must pray for the grace ask and you will receive seek and you shall find knock and it will be opened unto you So he says let us pray to the Lord so that he will help us find the sanctity Now listen carefully to allow ourselves to be loved by God which is the vocation of us all now all of us you know when we take god seriously we wonder what our vocation is what is god's call understandably but i would say our prime vocation before this the secondary vocation is the doing part the primary vocation is the being part and saint john of the cross is saying um, uh, this is uh, to be loved by god is the vocation of us all 
This is Christianity. This is authentic spirituality. To open my soul on an ongoing, consistent, persevering way to receive God's love. Because it's to the extent I receive God's love, I can give myself to God. Because the more you love a person, no sacrifice is too great. 